Welcome back, everybody. I think a lot of us have one or two bags of frozen peas or broccoli stuck in the back of our freezers, sometimes uninspired, but they're always there just in case we need them. During the pandemic, I think a lot of people that I know of stocked up on frozen food just to have on hand. But today we're going to learn how to elevate them to a whole new level. So welcome back to the show, Sarah Lynn Koshan. Nice to see you. Hello, ladies. It is always such a pleasure to be here. It's been a while and I'm happy to see your lovely faces, even if it's virtual. <laughs> well, let's talk about frozen food. I think it used to get a bad rep, but like Cynthia mentioned, it seems to be having a renaissance of sorts during the pandemic. Like I will always have frozen peas <laughs> in my freezer at every given time. So what can you tell us about this? Renaissance is actually the perfect word for it. I will admit that actually for years, I used to call my freezer the abyss <laughs> because it, with the exception <laughs> of maybe ice cream and a bottle of vodka or two, anything that went in there never came out. There was a bit of a snobbery about it. And that is of course, until the pandemic hit and frozen food became like my best friend. And I know I'm not alone because in March, 2020 alone, freezer sales increased tenfold. And if you can believe it, in the last two years, frozen foods have seen double and triple digit increases in sales across every single category. So needless to say, because we all want to be making fewer trips to the supermarket and we're all eating at home a lot more, frozen food is back on the menu. And I'm here to show you how you can make it great. Amazing. Okay, first up, we're going to use some of the frozen meatballs that may or may not be rolling around in the back of our <laughs> freezer. So how do we elevate this staple? Okay, so frozen meatballs are are just one of those things that have become like so common in my house because they're one of the only things my picky daughter Elle will actually eat these days. And one of my favorite ways to prepare them is a meatball stroganoff. So this is all the yumminess of a traditional stroganoff, except we're oh. going to be using some frozen meatballs to make it. I know, right? So basically you're gonna cook your frozen meatballs in the oven like you usually do. And in the meantime, you're gonna mix up a beautiful stroganoff sauce. So that's a little bit of sauteed onion and mushroom, beef broth, sour cream, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce goes a long way. And you're going to toss that all together. So your meatballs are now in this beautiful sort of mushroom-based gravy. And then you can pile that on top of whatever you want. You can do cooked rice, cauliflower rice. If you're living that low-carb life is great. I use egg noodles. That's a big hit in my house. This is a really, really versatile dish. And honestly, it's so good. <laughs> I mean, that looks incredible. It also looks like it, it was something that would actually keep really well for the next day. So yeah. is this a good leftovers dish? And I'm just Absolutely. on that note, what is your favorite way to refresh a dish that we may want to repurpose as leftovers? Okay, so I will tell you, this makes killer leftovers, such a good lunch the next day. If you have a choice to skip the microwave here, I highly recommend doing it. Just grab yourself a nice big nonstick skillet. A little bit of butter goes a long way to re refreshing mm. your leftovers. And a nice big splash of beef broth is really going to bring this back to life. Trust me, this is one of those things you can make during your Sunday meal prep and enjoy it Monday, Tuesday, even Wednesday. It's super good. Oh my God. If there's enough left over, that sounds so good. <laughs> but Sarah I have to tell you, I love pierogies on hand in the freezer for these cold winter nights, even a summer night. You've made a delicious <laughs> meal with frogan, frozen pierogies and sausage. What else can you tell us about it? Okay. So we have to talk about frozen pierogies. Not only are they obviously delicious, dough, potatoes, cheese, three of my favorite things, um, but they're ultra affordable. <laughs> and let's be honest, our grocery budgets are shrinking every day because of this wild inflation we're seeing. A box of pierogies at my supermarket right now goes for two twenty nine. dollars So this entire meal that you see before me, I made for under 15 bucks for a family of four. Now, these are sheet pan pierogies. So instead of boiling and frying your pierogies, you're going to toss them on a little bit of olive oil, season them with some smoked paprika, a little bit of garlic powder, and then load them onto a sheet pan with some onions, some bell pepper, and some smoked sausage. So this is a smoked turkey sausage. You could use kielbasa if you wanted to. And into the oven, this goes for 25 to 30 minutes. And when it comes out, it is delicious. Your house smells amazing. The pierogies have a really crisp exterior and a soft, pillowy interior. And you just serve those up with some fresh green onion, a little bit of sour cream, and you have a meal that everyone is going to love. True story. Wow. 
Um, looks no must, that no looks incredible. <laughs> little cute little pillows of pierogies. Okay, so we're going to move on to this next dish. Uh, I think so many kids, they're big fans of fish sticks, including my son. But I often feel guilty about just you know, throwing out some frozen fish sticks on a plate. So <laughs> you have elevated them to an amazing Baja fish taco. Tell us more. Yes. First of all, there was no shame in fish sticks. I'm a kid of the 80s. So fish sticks were like part of the repertoire. <laughs> Um, but the Baja, the Baja fish tacos definitely take them to the next level. So you're basically just cooking your fish sticks the way you normally would, but then you're going to break them up, load them into some flour tortillas, top them with some coleslaw mix, the kind you find already chopped at your supermarket. Cause you guys know I am all about making life easier, not harder. And then I just top them with a little bit of lime crema, which is essentially just fancy sour cream that's mixed with a little bit of lime juice and some cilantro. You could add some jalapeno to this if you want the spice or leave them just as they are. They're super flavorful, but they've got that really nice crunch courtesy of those frozen fish sticks that everyone likes to judge so much. I'm going to make that this I weekend. I hear Sorry. you. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about like frozen, like for the plant eaters out there, frozen veggies on those tacos or frozen beans? Like what do you, what works? Absolutely. So frozen veggies are actually the number one frozen food. And I just want to say at this moment that you don't have to stick with just the frozen peas and broccoli that we all know and love. They've got frozen peppers now, frozen asparagus you can find, frozen sweet potatoes have become one of my favorites because it's so convenient, mm -hmm. so much nicer than peeling and cooking your sweet potato. So I would do a combination of frozen peppers, frozen sweet potatoes, and frozen corn in these tacos. That would be killer a little bit of chili powder. Love, love, love. Yes. I think a lot of people, when they think of frozen food, they think of frozen pizza. But what if you want to make yeah. that frozen <laughs> pizza a bit fancy? How do we upgrade? Okay, so frozen pizza is actually number two, just behind frozen veggies in terms of popularity. Um, I used to never eat frozen pizza. I was like, this is sacrilege, but you can actually amp it up really, really easily. One of the biggest secrets to making frozen pizza really delicious is actually increasing the temperature in your oven to 450 or 500 degrees. That's closer to the temperature of a traditional pizza oven, and it cooks the pizza ah. in a totally different way. Here, I decided to amp up just a regular frozen cheese pizza by adding a little bit of Caesar salad dressing, some fresh spinach. I had some leftover chicken that I piled on here. And then I added some shredded mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. Bake that off in the oven for like 10 minutes at 500 degrees. And you have a pizza that is worth writing home about. No joke. And just a frozen pizza, guys. It's so, so simple and so affordable. Gorgeous. So fancy. Well, speaking of fancy, <laughs> you have a frozen recipe that's going to use up some frozen fruit. Um, I do buy frozen fruit, and I think a lot of people do, but I often don't know what else to use them before besides smoothies. So tell us what, what, you, what you've cooked up. Okay, so here I have my amazing vanilla berry sauce, and this stuff is so good. You're basically taking your frozen berries in a little, little saucepan, adding a squeeze of lemon juice, some sugar, and a little bit of vanilla extract, and you have the most mm. amazing chopper for things like pancakes, waffles, French toast, or ice cream. Honestly, my favorite way to use frozen fruit. Oh my gosh, Sarah Lynn, thank you for all of these delicious frozen meal ideas. I, I feel like I know I'm going to make a few of those this week. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. Everyone watching, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.